As early as the 1st of January 2011, in his New Year's address, Benedict XVI invited the believers to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Assisi Peace Prayers. He said, to commemorate the great historic gesture of my predecessor and to solemnly renew the commitment of the believers of all religions to live their own religious faith as a service to peace. We ask, what is the real purpose of these peace prayers? This so-called great historic gesture is a total betrayal of Christianity. Why? It is a syncretistic meeting with the purpose of spreading the spirit of Assisi among the clergy and the faithful and laying down a path of apostasy which the deceived souls will follow up to eternal perdition. The central motto of these New Age meetings is cheap phrases like We all have the same God. We all will be saved, each in his own religion. But this is Horace's maximum. The spirit of Assisi presents paganism as an alternative way to salvation. But then Christ's death on the cross was in vain, and God is degraded to the level of demons. This awful betrayal was brought into the church by John Paul II in 1986. He was the main inspirer and director of the first Assisi meeting. He invited representatives of false religions. Buddhists, Hindus, animists, Muslims, Shintoists, Zoroastrians, Native Americans, shamans, and extended a cordial welcome to each of them. At the Pope's instigation, all the crosses were removed, and those that could not be removed were covered. Then he put the Christian churches at the disposal of the pagans. There they performed their rites during which they invoked demons. For example, Buddhists chanted mantras in St. Peter's Church in Assisi. They placed the idol of Buddha on the tabernacle. So-called prayers were uttered there in common too. John Paul II suggestively declared a heresy that we have one father with the pagans, and therefore he closed the meeting with the prayer, Our Father. Thereafter, these syncretistic meetings were held in different cities every year. John Paul II confirmed his syncretistic gesture of Assisi on many other occasions too. He was personally present again at the meeting in Assisi in 2002. What does the Holy Scripture say as to Assisi? What pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. The gesture of Assisi is contrary to the Holy Scripture, the spirit of the Gospel, and the whole tradition of the Apostles, Church Fathers, Martyrs and Saints. Whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. These words of the Scripture apply to John Paul II. By his gesture, the Pope put the Christian faith on an equal footing with pagan religions, set out a line of apostasy from Christ and his gospel, and opened the whole church to a curse. How was this curse made manifest in the Catholic Church? Throughout the pontificate of John Paul II, the Church witnessed mass apostasy. This apostasy was caused by the spread of heresies of historical critical theology at theological faculties and by so-called reverence for other religions. This resulted in the loss of faith and morals, which became evident mostly among the clergy. A visible manifestation of terrible apostasy sheltered by the authority of John Paul II was homosexuality and pedophilia. The fact that these atrocities were committed on the little ones by members of the clergy brings shame on the whole Catholic Church. However, what is even more shocking is that the high church representatives were silent on the committed crimes, neglected to punish the culprits and covered up their crimes. For example, the founder of the Legionaries of Christ, Marcial Maciel, abused young seminarians for several decades. John Paul II supported this order, and both he and his advisors ignored the evidence of Marcial's crimes for years. 
One of the world's scandals was the pedophile crimes in the Boston Archdiocese, which were revealed in January 2002. For example, the priest John Geoghan sexually abused more than 100 boys. The biggest shock was that the church leaders knew about it. The church secretly paid over $1.3 billion to reduce the victims to silence. John Paul II was fully informed about everything. He was responsible for the injustices and crimes that were perpetrated on innocent children. He caused profound indignation among both believers and unbelievers. On the 13th of September 2011, Reuters news agency reported that the victims of sexual child abuse brought an action before the International Criminal Court in The Hague against the highest representatives of the Catholic Church. It concerns Benedict XVI, the former prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, the former Secretary of the State, Cardinal Sudano, Cardinal Bertone and Cardinal Levada. The court was presented with an 80-page complaint along with 20,000 pages of evidence of child abuse crimes for which the full responsibility falls upon the church hierarchy. The main culprit, however, is missing among the accused because instead of being brought before the court, he was beatified on the 1st of May 2011. We are witnessing an absurd situation. John Paul II was beatified and those who carried out his orders and kept the so-called papal secret are accused of crimes against humanity and are awaiting trial. Having beatified John Paul II, Benedict XVI elevated the spirit of betrayal, the spirit of Assisi, to the altar of the Church. He thus cast out the Holy Spirit and brought a curse upon the whole Church. All priests who continue in spiritual unity with him as an apostate pope after the pseudo-beatification no longer celebrate the Divine Liturgy and administer the sacraments validly. Pope Paul IV in his bull declared null and void all acts of apostatical hierarchy and said that if the Pope was guilty of heresy, he ceased to be Pope. God has taken away the continual sacrifice from the official Church. In the state of apostasy, instead of calling the Church to repent, Benedict XVI invites all to the Assisi Babylon. There, along with representatives of various pagan religions, he wants to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the spirit of Assisi and its rule. The official church, headed by Benedict XVI, is under God's curse owing to a public betrayal of Christ and his gospel. The aim of the meeting in Assisi is to implant the so-called logic of Assisi as a new Catholic tradition. Phrases about peace, forgiveness, tolerance and unity are a mere disguise of the apostatical hierarchy in order to bring in the spirit of New Age. Globalization of religion under the baton of New Age is evidenced by a clip which serves as an invitation to the meeting in Assisi. A Franciscan and a Jew are singing a song about Allah being their God. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Allahu, Allahu, Allahu. It is evident that on the pattern of Assisi, both of them enthusiastically renounced the belief in the one and true God and changed their faith. Another clip in the spirit of Assisi is a performance of the music group The Flowers. During the song, members of different pagan religions take turns in front of the microphone. <laughs> Buddhists are chanting mantras. The Jews are reading the Shema Israel, which in this situation is a downright mockery of God. 
The seminarians close this blasphemous song with the words Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. A prologue to Assisi was a so-called peace meeting in Munich from 11th to 13th September 2011. It was attended by representatives of pagan religions too. In his letter of the 1st of September 2011, Benedict XVI said that he was happy that the meeting was to take place in Munich, his former episcopal see. He also pointed out its connection with the 25th anniversary, which was to be celebrated in Assisi in a few days. The meetings in Munich and Assisi are another open manifestation of a betrayal of Christ and his gospel. God's word says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship can light have with darkness? And we add, what prayers with pagans in Assisi? The so-called peace prayers are in fact idolatrous ceremonies of which God says, Do not do this abominable thing that I hate. God in his word calls pagan idolatry an abomination. Therefore a Christian who loves God cannot participate in syncretistic meetings. The meeting in Assisi in 2011 is a jubilee betrayal of Christ and his commandments. It will take place with the participation of the highest church representatives again. Their approval or even participation in this anti-Christian event is yet another evidence of their apostasy from Christ and from the gospel. The apostatical hierarchy headed by Benedict XVI became the cause of the curse on the nations. By beatification of John Paul II, Benedict XVI elevated the apostatical teaching and the spirit of Antichrist to the altar of the Church, whereby he assumed the role of Judas. In the same way as the Pharisaical hierarchy behaved towards Judas, they now behave to Benedict. The scripture says to all Catholics who want to remain faithful to God and His commandments, Be separate from them. Come out of Babylon.